Hey, all right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Sunday, September 26, 2021. Welcome to the Sunday edition of our Saturday synopsis. We typically make these videos on Saturdays. Was not available yesterday, so now you all get the Sunday version. What do we do here on our Saturday slash Sunday synopsis? We take a look at the charts. That's what we do. We look at the charts. We look at the indexes. We look at individual stock charts. So I can help you become a better trader. I've been in this business 30 years. I've looked at probably hundreds of thousands of charts over that time. And that is how I determine what I'm going to trade and how I'm going to trade it. I'm a technical analysis trader. That means I look at the charts. Charting is my main source of how I make my trading decisions. So my goal here in these videos is to give you an idea of what I'm doing, what I'm seeing, and what I look for when I'm looking at charts to help me decide, okay, it's time to make the trade. So let's just jump right in, talk about it, and let me show you what we do here. We always start with the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500, which is what I consider the broadest measure of the market as a whole. It's based of it's based in 500 stocks. That's what makes up the S&P 500. Now, what we like to do is what you see on your chart is what's what you see on your screen is what's called a daily bar chart. I use bar charts. Some people like to use candlestick charts. I stick with bar charts. What you're seeing is each one of these lines here is one day's worth of trading. And traders can look at multiple different time frames or time lengths for their charting and their trading to help them decide, are, are you a long-term trader or a short-term trader? Short-term traders like to look at, let's say, one-minute charts, where in this case, each one of these bars is one minute's worth of trading. This is for your truly hyperactive day traders who like to get in and out of trades so they all day long so they look at the the way the charts moving they look at moving averages um you know i'm not that kind of trader basically you know if i want to get into a trade i may use the one minute chart to kind of help me time the trade on that specific day but but we typically default to daily charts now what you see on your screen here is a daily chart of the s p 500 the spy going back about two years in time that's what my real estate screen is showing so what do we do well we always since we here at the smart options seller um we are put sellers and put spread sellers, which means we like to see stocks that are moving higher or at least moving flat. Bullish, neutral to bullish trades are good for selling puts and selling put option spreads. So when we look at charts, we want to look at charts that are uptrending. You start from the bottom left to the upper right. So we want to see a stock moving up, kind of hugging along moving averages. So once again, I like to show you what I have on my charts. I try to keep it simple. There's so many different technical and technical indicators you can use and some people think well wouldn't the more indicators you use be better because they're all trying to tell you something I used to think that as well when I first started out but it, you end up with charts that have all these jumbled lines on them and eventually you just can't even see anything anymore so I just stick with a few very basic simple uh, indicators and then I just watch the price action. The price action is the, the movement of the, the stock itself. So what I have on my screen here, and I can open this up a little more, I have a blue 20-day simple moving average, a red 50-day simple moving average, and this green is a simple 200-day moving average. Now, people ask me, what's the difference between simple or exponential? You can choose either a simple or exponential. Now, a simple day moving average will take each day's worth of price action and will compute it, average it out all equally. An exponential moving average has more emphasis on the, the more recent price action. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't average them all out on an equal basis. I use a simple because I like I like to have every day's worth of price action um, give the same have the same value into the moving average. They, they won't really differ that much if you put an exponential. If let's say you put a 50-day exponential on the chart with a 50-day simple, they, they're not that much different. Okay, but I use the simple and only those three. And down here is what's called the RSI indicator. It's an overbought, oversold indicator. And um, it's a 14-day. It's the default 14-day. And 
the the R side tells you whether a stock or index is overbought or oversold or entering overbought or oversold area. And it defaults to the 75 level and the 25 level as, as their version of meaning or the creator's version of meaning overbought, oversold. You can expand those numbers out. I expand it out to the 80 and 20. Those two levels, 80 and 20 to me, tell me whether a stock or index is really overbought or really oversold. Doesn't mean a turnaround is imminent. It just means that, hey, we're getting a little overheated or a little oversold. Keep an eye on the price action. So those are the three. Th I use the moving averages, RSI, and then I look for price patterns. You'll see I have a lot of things marked up on my screen. These are price patterns. We look for Ws. We look for wedges. We look for flags. All those different kinds of, of patterns that 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 play out over and over again. And if you want some information on this, you could just do a Google search on, you know, stock chart patterns, and you'll come up with websites that'll give you free information, and you can see these patterns. And, and, and over and over again, it's human nature. When, when a lot of people start seeing the same patterns, the same results tend to play out. So that's a good thing. And so we just watch for these patterns play out. So that's basically what I use. And then I just watch the price action. The price action is whether a stock's moving up or down or whatever kind of pattern it's making. Now, if we're looking for bullish stocks, we want to see a stock moving up. And I like to see the stock hugging along either the 50-day or 20-day moving average. Okay, and we'll open it up here. So this is the S&P 500. You can see whenever it has a pullback, it either bounces off the 50-day or 20-day moving average. That shows you a good sign that a stock or index is in a nice trend, whether that's an uptrend or downtrend. And I use this every week. I say the same analogy every week. The stock market truly is like physics. An object in motion tends to stay in motion in that same direction until something comes along and pushes in another direction. Okay, so that's how stocks work. They tend to move in the same direction until something comes along and pushes it in the other direction. What other dire what, what thing would come along to push a stock in another direction? The biggest would be an earnings announcement, a bad earnings announcement. If it's been bullish and all of a sudden there's a bad earnings, it could knock it back down. Doesn't mean it's going to stay down forever. Um, you know, Fed announcements, government announcements, overseas conflicts, just major, major story headlines. The pandemic, you know, back in March of 2020, February, March of 2020, the S&P 500 here, let's back up here. S&P 500 was in a nice, you know, neutral to bullish trend and then here's where the pandemic hit so something like that is what can cause a, a market or stock to change direction but you can see how quickly it bounced okay you can't keep these stocks down for long all right so let's take a look at things and see uh, where we left off last week and compare it to one week's worth of trading so last week we were uh here's where we were last week i had mentioned this is the s p 500 i had mentioned that the S&P 500 had fallen right down to the 50-day moving average, and we wanted to see uh, a bounce because most of the time the, the S&P 500 was bouncing off the 50-day moving average or the 20-day. And if there was really no reason for, for things to come off or to, to, for, to, to sell off, then it should bounce, right? There was no major news stories other than the pandemic and things that are happening around the world. But, but there really wasn't enough to change the trajectory. There really wasn't enough for all of a sudden all the 500 companies in the S&P 500 to turn, into, to turn bearish, right? So we're looking for the 50-day moving average to hold and, and to bounce. So this is where we ended last Friday. And as we know this week, so Monday was a big down day. This long bar here was Monday. And, uh, you know, a lot of people got scared, like, what's going on? Why is this happening? You know, there's multiple narratives out there and and people whenever we have a big move like this especially to the downside people start to think okay well this is it stocks have topped out there's nowhere there's nowhere else for stocks to go but down at this point the next bear market has ha is is underway and and i'm always skeptical of people that talk like that because if you look at the market over time and let's pull out to the monthly where this is the stock market since the early 1990s We'll have pullbacks, but since 2008, 2009, we've gone straight up, even with the pandemic here, still going straight up. So there's really nothing that's going to hold down the stock market for very long, uh, the way that things are these days, especially when the central banks around the world will do everything they can to keep a, a floor, a bottom under the whole financial system, and that includes the stock market. So 
What happened this week? S&P 500 had the big down move on Monday, and then look what happened the rest of the week. It rallied all the way back up to a, to where we were last Friday. So if you had gone to sleep last Friday and woken up uh, this past Friday, you wouldn't have think anything happened. We're pretty much at the same place as we were. These are the last two Fridays right here. These two. If you forget about all this junk down here, you wouldn't have known any different and you thought things were okay. But you have to, we have to endure these things sometimes in the market. We have these sell-offs. Now, this created a gap right here. This is what's called a gap where one day's trading ends and then another day begins. And there's got this big hole, this big air pocket right here that we like to, is what we chartists like to call, we want to call, we like to see what's called filling the gap. And filling the gap means after the drop, you want to see the market action go back up to close the gap here. And each one of these bars, the, the top of the bar is the high of the day and the, the bottom of the bar is the low of the day. So you want to see the gap close. And so what we did looks like on Thursday, we closed that gap right here. So that's a pretty bullish, strong sign. We'd like to see that. And one of the big, the bigger things here is that the market finished. You see the little dash mark on the right side of the, the bar is the closing price of the day. Closing price of the day is very important. And you can see it closed above the 50 day moving average. Here's the close. Here's a little dash mark. So it closed above the 50 day. That's, that's, that's a very strong sign in my book. So I think the market just had its little sell off. Bottom feeders came out, started to buy it back up. And now we're, we're hugging around the 50 day moving average, which is a great thing. So we want to see probably a little consolidation here. It had a good jump back that took a lot of effort. So probably consolidate a little and then you know, start moving up again. We're coming into towards the end of the year, typically August and September are very, very not friendly months to the stock market. So we're getting towards the end of September. Typically, October, November, December can be very bullish. So once we get moving here, I can see towards the end of the year rallying up, making new highs again. So let's take a look as the SP 500. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's usually pretty, pretty powerful. Um, let's use the QQQ just like the SPY the QQQ is the exchange rated fund for the NASDAQ itself so we like to watch that we'll blow it up here a little same thing had the big move down Monday had the air pocket the gap right here and spent the rest of the week moving up closed the gap also closed well above you can see here here's where Friday closed dash mark well above the 50-day moving average that's strong we like to see that so looking good um, you know, people, the stock market's the only place where you're going to get any kind of return on your investment. So people will buy, people need to buy stocks. And when you get an opportunity like that to, to buy on a dip, people are going to do it. And that's what happened. Now, typically I like to make sure, or I like to see when the stock's moving up that, um, it bounces off the 50 day at least. I don't like to get it down to the 200 day. That's a little scary. That's a long ways to go. People get really scared about that, but also can make for great buying opportunities. But anyway, I have my, I have a loose rule that I, that I give a, a move below moving average at least three days. Um, if it doesn't rally back up after three days, then I, you know, give it a, a closer look, but exactly what we happened. We had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday just closed above the 50 day here on this day. And then Thursday and Friday finished above it. So I'm feeling pretty good about the market. Bulls came back, defended the down move. Let's take a look at the Dow. I don't put as much emphasis, emphasis on the Dow Jones. It only has 30 stocks in it, but it is a, a, a long time barometer. But let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Dow Jones had fallen, it had been pretty, pretty, uh, flat for a long period of time, pretty flat, had a big move down last Monday as well, came kind of close to the 200 day moving average. Um, but the, these averages were a lot closer than if you look at the SPY or the QQQ, the, 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 the difference between where the 50 day and the, and the 200 day, there's a, is a lot greater here. It's a little bit tighter. So the Dow had a little bit of move to give and it bounced right back up still below the, 50 day and 20 day still below, but, but here, right here, it's, it, it tagged or connected right with the 20 day moving average. So that's good. We like it to move back up towards the moving averages. 
So the indexes look good. I think people are enthused. We're getting through September, which is typically not a great month and moving, looking forward to the end of the year. I think stocks are the, and the indexes as, as a whole are going to keep moving on, moving on up. All right, let's take a look at some individual stocks here. If my chart will cooperate with me, give me a second here. All right, there we go. So let's take a look at some individual stocks now and see what's been happening. We take a look, we tend to take a look at the more popular stocks, the stocks making big moves, just so we can see if there's any patterns developing. So let's start with Apple because we always start with Apple and see what we've been doing. Now here you can see I, I have a lot of lines drawn. These are just patterns and, and channels that we've drawn. So back here we have the what's called the congestion pattern. It's a triangle and, and the ranges get smaller and smaller and smaller, building up this energy and we're waiting for a big move to occur. So what happened? It popped to the upside. When you get the triangle, it's either going to pop to the downside or pop to the upside pretty good. Pop to the upside. Then it moved into this downtrending channel, had a W. So there's a lot of things that you can draw on the charts depending on your time frame, what you're seeing. Another, another channel here, another channel. So the last thing we've seen for Apple was in this uptrending channel, broke above it, broke below it, and now it's kind of hugging the bottom of the this little slightly uptrending channel, has fallen below the moving averages, has fallen below the 50-day, fallen below the 20-day, along with the rest of the market. Here is the gap on Monday, rallied back. So Apple, you know, in the long run, Apple is a great company. We know it will probably go up. iPhone 13s just came out. So Apple, it's still, these are all-time highs right here. We're not far off the all-time highs. I think Apple had the little blip down, and I think it'll probably continue to move up, probably towards the top of this uptrending channel here. So in the long run, we can see that Apple is in an upward trajectory, just has these little fits and, fits and starts along the way, but it's still moving up. Apple, great company. In the long run, it's going higher. Let's see what else we have. Let's take a look at Nike because Nike had a big move down this week, had earnings come out on Friday, September 24th. It had this gap down, earnings came out. So Nike was in, so here's the pandemic, was in a nice up move, then entered this downtrending channel, which was bearish. And then all of a sudden, it, I, here was uh, their last earnings, popped up greatly, popped up a good, what was it, maybe $15 a share was making all time new highs here, then entered this downtrending channel here. Now, if you wanna know how to do a downtrending channel or any channel, what you do is you draw your lines and you kind of connect the tops, connect the bottoms, and now you got yourself a channel, downtrending channel, and then it had its earnings came out and it had this big gap, right? So here's where Nike is. So it is it has fallen below where, it it gapped up. Here's a huge gap up here. Will this big gap ever close? I don't know. Nike would have to fall all the way down to about $135 a share to close the gap to this last bar right here. Um, it's fallen down. It, it looks like the 200 day moving average could be the next level it might want to hit. RSI though, starting to get a little oversold, a little oversold. You can see the last over, it's not really even oversold, but the last bottom was when it, it popped up here. And you can see how it was hugging along this overbought area. It doesn't mean that it's an, a turnaround is imminent, it just means things are getting overheated. But you can see, even though it was hugging around overbought levels, the stock continued to move higher. And then it just entered this downtrending channel and here is where the gap is. So Nike, I wouldn't be bullish yet. Nike is a great company, but we wanna wait for some semblance of, of a bottoming out action. What does that mean? That means the stock will st sort of trade sideways, trying to find a bottom. It'll hug around this area. It'll, you know, these next couple weeks, we'll probably maybe start making this sideways bottoming action. So I wouldn't be bullish yet. You want to see what the market's going to do, what the stock's going to do. And if it starts to make like a nice kind of rounding bottom over the successive days or weeks and start to move up again, that may be the opportunity to get long. I'm not long Nike yet. It's too, it, it, you have to wait to see what happens after this big gap move. We want to see some, some bottoming formation, but for now it's sort of oversold. 
may, new, may need that rounding bottom to make me feel comfortable. Let's see what else. Uh, AMD is a favorite of ours. AMD had this all-time new highs here and then just has been consolidating that huge move. Kind of sideways action here, hugging along the 50-day moving average, which is good. Want to see that the moving averages help hold the, the stock, and it did. It had the, the gap down last week, and then it, it spent the rest of the week moving higher again. So AMD, I know is a strong company, had this pullback. Would I get long here? Eh, maybe, maybe not, maybe not yet. If it pops above the 20-day moving average, which is the blue line here, start going up, then I'd feel, okay, AMD's, the bottom feeders have, have decided the bottom has been hit, time to get long again, try to shoot for the all-time new highs. Uh, we may see a little more sideways action, but that also depends on how the overall market is doing. What else do we have? Um, Microsoft, still looking strong, Microsoft has just been going up, 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 hugging along the 20-day, catching the 50-day and the move down last week. The 50-day's been holding this thing. Microsoft's been very strong. I mean, if you've been looking for a place to, to get in and timing it properly, you'd probably want to wait for a move bouncing off this 50-day early last week, which is what it showed. Microsoft just strong. Uh, there would be no reason for me to think that it's going lower. Uh, earnings will be starting to come out probably mid the third week of October. So keep an eye on the earnings dates if you're getting involved in some stocks. Let's take a look. Oracle. Oracle a, is a company that we've sold put options on. Oracle, very strong. I like where it's going. Had to move down a little bit, but found its way higher again this week. Bounced the, got back above the 20-day and 50-day moving averages. That they're kind of converging right here. So that's good. We like Oracle. Looks like it may want to take out all-time new highs and start another leg higher. We like Oracle. Let's see what else we have. Amazon. Always look at Amazon. Amazon still caught in this long, long channel here, sideways channel. It had a, uh, an earnings drop, created the, the, oh, the gap, almost filled the gap here on this high. Didn't quite hit the low here. The high here to low here means the gap will be filled, not quite, and fall, fell back down again. So a Amazon still kind of caught in this, this channel. If you're selling condors or put spreads or call spreads, you're doing good because it's kind of staying in this range. So that's what you like to be as an option seller. You like to see a range-bound stock. So if you're condor sellers, you're doing pretty good. Same thing with, let's take a quick look at Netflix. Netflix. Uh, was in this long channel as well, just like Amazon, but finally is moving above it, hugging along the 20-day moving average. You know, if we wanted to, we could, you know, create a new line. Now things are always changing, so it's okay to to redo your lines. We can we can bring this out a little bit, and we can see now that Netflix has gotten above the upper resistance once it gets above a resistance or drops below a support it may continue to move in that direction so netflix looking strong it may want to try to take out its all-time new highs here so hugging along the 20 days so you want to watch some of the, you want to see the moving averages sloping upwards as well that means it's a strong uptrend okay so that's netflix what else do we have here um did we look at cisco cisco looking since falling below the 50-day moving average, uh, not much there. Proct Procter & Gamble, good stock. Walmart, let's take a quick look at Walmart because I always talk about Walmart. Biggest, largest physical retailer on the planet. Great stalwart, great company to hold long-term. I mean, it goes up, goes down, sideways, up, down. You have to you have to live with the moves, okay? If you're just in it for capital appreciation, you're going to get frustrated at times because it really hasn't gone much anywhere since last summer. Last August, it was still trading around the 145 level, and forward ahead of year, it's still trading around the 145 level. So price appreciation really isn't my, uh, Walmart's strong suit here at the moment. Uh, dividend, yes, uh, Walmart has a dividend. It's, it's uh, I believe it's in a, a dividend aristocrat, meaning it's, it's raised its div dividend every year for at least 25 years, probably much longer than that. I don't have the chart up in front of me, uh, but it's still a strong stock, okay? 
It's a bellwether. So holding for the long term, get that that dividend income is not a bad thing. Price appreciation, eh, not so much. We like we can sell puts on it or put spreads when when the timing is right. Uh, not much happening here for me for Walmart to make a decision on a trade. Disney, 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 Disney. Let's take a look. For a number of years, I lived in Orlando, Florida, and Disney had its tentacles everywhere. I mean, I knew so many people that worked for Disney, Central Florida. That's all it is. Disney employs so many people. But I love the company. It's a great company. Price action, though, been in this been in this channel, bounced off the bottom of the channel. So sideways action is is the, the call of the day for, for Disney. Uh, I'd like to see it go higher, but for now, it's probably going to meander around here. So not much price action either way with Disney. Tesla, yes, Tesla. We've, we, we talk about Tesla, and I had drawn this uptrending channel for a while, and now it's getting upon the top of the channel is above all the moving averages moving averages are sloping upwards that's good so tesla it just it, it hangs in there it keep you know people don't want to see tesla go down people love tesla so the stock goes up in this channel here hitting along the top of the channel it may hit some resistance and and, and maybe start to move down towards the bottom of the channel it's not a lot of price action maybe about a hundred dollars a share in between here so it could tick down and if you're looking for timing pattern, you may want to see a little bit of pullback first uh, before getting bullish. Maybe down to here, moving averages, or maybe down to the bottom. But we'll see. If the market is strong next week, it could possibly pop out above it. But chances are it may, if the market's a little weak, Tesla will probably come back down a little. What else do we have? The, the healthcare stocks, the pharmaceuticals, Lilly, BMI, Bristol-Myers, let me show you about show you bristol mars now we got in a trade here we sold some put options on bristol mars because what we like to see is i don't we typically like to wait for you know after a down move like this is a big down move for a company like bristol mars but it started to get the the sideways price action way way oversold on the rsi and, and what i don't have on this chart is is the volume and maybe let me see if i could let me put on the volume chart here so what we have for, uh, let's see, let's try this here. So volume, um, so what we had here was this spike in volume. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to change these S volume. Let me see what I can do on the volume. Where's my volume here? Um, hmm, uh, well, anyway. The volume spiked more than usual right here, which is one of these down, down on the down day. One of the down days hit the oversold volume spike. That typically means that that the selling is getting exhausted. Selling is getting exhausted, and it may be coming to a bottom or at least sideways action. So we sold some put options. Still had a, some nice cushion. Sold some put options. You know, down here in these levels, and we're liking that. Bristol Myers just just got hit just too too hard for us to ignore, so we got in a play there. Pfizer, these are all pharmaceuticals. Pfizer, Merck, um, you know they they got hit, and so we try to take advantage when we can. Let's take a look at some other stocks. Um, what do we like? Square, Square and PayPal, but we 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 default to Square. We like Square. Um, sort of in this channel sideways action is okay if you're selling options because the stock's not going anywhere and that time decay will be great for you square uh, has bounced off the 200 day moving average moving higher and has gotten above both the 50 day and 20 day here so square we like to see that kind of bullish price action um what else what else mcdonald's still strong mcdonald's just keeps going up pepsi we talked about pepsi before We've drawn the support line for Pepsi. Um, Try to drop below it. Got came back up. So keep this. If you're long Pepsi, keep watch on this this line right here. It's about 153, 54 dollars. You want to see it bounce and start to move higher. If it starts to fall through, you've got this 200 day lurking below. So um, Pepsi, you might want to see it bounce. Uh, watch the support here. What else? What else? Uh, Twitter. We've sold some puts on Twitter. We like this. 
We like this price action. We like how it bounced off the 200 day moving average and now has gotten above the 20 and 50. Finished on the highs on Friday and Twitter looking to make a comeback, looking to keep moving up. We like that price action for Twitter. It's all about looking at the price action, looking at the, 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 the patterns. Uh, Facebook. Um, we had a little thing with Facebook this week. We had a position. We got out of it after it fell. There are some news headlines that I didn't really like about Facebook. That's the reason why I got out. It rallied back. Had we held, we could have made more money. But you know what? I don't. Uh, Facebook, there's some things going on behind the scenes that I didn't like. So we got out of our trade for a small profit. Uh, what else is there? Google, always looking strong for Google. Bounced off the 50-day. Google just keeps going up. Um, I don't like to talk about the the meme stocks, Bitcoin stocks anymore. All right, so that's pretty much it. Getting long here, 30 minutes. Let's go back to the, the index, SPY. Do a quick little over, overview once again. The index has had a big move down Monday, rallied all the way back, took the whole week to rally back up. That's a good sign. Right around the 50-day moving average, finished above it. I like that. I like that, how it finished above. So we might see some consolidation here. Had a big move last week, consolidation, and then run into the end of the year higher. So that's what I'm looking for. All right. So that's it for the, the, sad, the Sunday synopsis this week. I know we're getting around 30 minutes here. Uh, I hope this is helpful. You know, these are the things I look at, look for patterns, look for the moving averages, just things to help me gauge where stocks go in and go next. Um, let's take a quick look at our website. Put smartoptionseller.com. Put Selling Basics on our website. If you want a free copy of our Put Selling Basics guide to teach you how to sell put options, what it's all about, why we love it, go to this page. Scroll down. You can read through some of the testimonials. Put in your name and email address. We'll send you a free copy. And then if you want to know what else we do here at Smart Options Seller, click on our services tab. We have a couple newsletters and our coaching that could help you get over the hump if you need a little help. All right. That's it for me today. I hope this video has been helpful in this YouTube video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button at the bottom, bottom right corner of this, this video and turn on your notifications. You'll get an email or however they do it, Twitter, on your phone, when I post a new video, typically on Saturdays. Give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, tell me what you're thinking. Send me an email, right to uh, Smart Option Seller as well, and I'll answer and I'll help you out. All right, so that's all for me today. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. I hope to see you here in the future. Take care.